You know, I like to change my fantasy team names like once a day. I think I'm going to change my team At least. name to legal to legal tampering. One of my favorite oxymorons legal tampering, right? Because free agency is already hot and heavy and off the chain. Um, I want to start with um, remember those conversations. I'm old enough to remember when uh, when running backs were disposable and replaceable, they were a dime a dozen and they were having yeah. zoom calls and therapy sessions and focus groups and group chats about how undervalued they are. Uh, and today can't tell uh, today running backs are having a resurgence running backs on the move. Um, we got to lead off with I think the kids call it nasty work. They, they call it nasty work. Uh, <laughs> I mean, like Saquon Barkley. Okay. Going okay. to the Eagles feels like what the kids call nasty work. Like, ooh, like the Eagles going and getting Saquon Barkley and further uh, making Giants fans' lives miserable. Howie Roseman paying up for a running back after he watched his running back, uh, at least last year's leading rusher, DeAndre Swift, go and join the Chicago Bears, uh, who have been busy uh, so far this offseason. Uh, Eagles didn't stop there, though. They got uh, Bryce Huff. Uh, the defensive end from the Jets. Uh, they're in the mix on Xavier McKinney from the Giants. But I want to start off with, uh, with, with, with Saquon Barkley, though, man. Um, what a huge pickup for the Eagles. What a devastating blow to Big Blue. Ooh. Oh, I mean, okay. So all the things you said about running back off the top, you're right. They did have a lot of Zoom calls about it not because they question their own value. They know they're valuable and they know the hypocrisy involved where you want a running back who could be on the field for three downs. That's what they're looking for. Hey, I, can, can, I know I know you can run the ball, but can you catch it? Okay, I can be a part of the passing game. Okay, that's good. Okay, uh, how are you on blitz pickup? Well, I got to add that to my game. Good. Good on blitz pickup. Well, can you run between the tackles? Yeah, I can do that too. I can run inside running outside whatever. I don't fumble all that stuff. They know they're valuable. Their question is why don't you pay up when it's time to pay me from my team? Why do you play this year to year game? Why do you franchise me some years and then say now we're not gonna franchise you. So they're a valuable part of football. They're still not getting the money that they deserve. The only reason these teams are scrambling for running backs now is because of the inequities of the system that they've created where all these running backs are not valued financially by their teams. They go on the open market and get a little bit more than what their teams would pay them. Uh, that being said, the Giants, what are you thinking? <laughs> what are you thinking? How do you let Saquon Barkley? He's your whole offense there. It's clear when Saquon Barkley is is out there. They are a much better offense. Daniel Jones is much better when Saquon Barkley is there as either a runner a runner or a, a, a check down guy and because he's a check down guy who takes it to the house. I love this signing for the Philadelphia Eagles. Oh, and yeah. it makes me question. It makes me question the Giants logic on this. Oh, what a miss. They he just they, t they went in. They just took your heart. He's the heart of the offense as a running back. In 2024, they lost the heart of their offense. They would have been better off losing Daniel Jones than losing Saquon Barkley. Yeah, and that's what they chose to sign. No, uh, I, I love it for the Eagles. They have, I mentioned fantasy football. They have a fantasy football offense, okay, at quarterback, mm. receiver, tight end, and running Woo. back. And even though Jason Kelsey uh, re retired, a big hole in the middle, I think they extended Landon Dickerson, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so yep, they've that's been right. pretty they busy. Did. They've been they've been very hey, hey, very well, they busy. Know, and Michael, let me ask you this hmm. question real quick. Hmm. I don't want I don't want to you know go uh, too far down this uh, this eagle this eagle slash rabbit hole, but do you think that they'll know that Nick Sirianni and Philadelphia will know how to use this weapon in the offense? Like you think you got Jalen Hurts, yeah. you got Saquon Barkley, you got Devontae Smith, you got AJ Brown, you got so many freaking weapons. I you got have, a great offensive line. I have. I have no, I have no doubts. I have no doubts. Maybe we might see fewer tush pushes. I have you, no doubts. You, you, doubt. you have no have, doubts. Who has he had? Like, you, Sa there, Saquon Barkley's not a committee. You, There's no committee when Saquon Barkley's your running back. He like this. Did you watch? You'd have to be a full. My Eagles watch what? down the stretch. 
you'd have to be collapse? a fool not to know how to how to pl- how to use Saquon Barkley, and you'd have to be a okay. fool to pay Saquon Barkley what they paid him, and have your coach and your staff not use him properly. I will just point this out. Just one last note about the running backs. Uh, okay. No Super Bowl winning team since 2013. No Super Bowl winning team since 2013 has paid its leading rusher more than 2.5 million dollars. Having said all that, I love That's that for the Eagles. I love Josh Jacobs to the Packers. I think Josh Jacobs has a lot of trade on his tires. Uh, I love the Packers adding him and maybe even pairing him with Aaron Jones for Jordan Love. Right. Jordan love Love's it. got tight ends. Jordan Love's got running backs. Jordan Love's got receivers. Green Bay, when you couple, listen, you and I, we love us in Detroit. We love us in Detroit. And Green yeah. Bay made the playoffs last year. Detroit's going to have a tough time holding off Green Bay in that division. Chicago's rebuilding again. Minnesota, we'll get to them in a second. Just took a huge hit. Mm. Green Bay's coming for sure. Um, and then you got some other interesting ones, more about the vacancies that they create um, and who they, might, who they might be replacing than anything. Um, Tony Pollard to Tennessee, which was interesting. Um, from the standpoint of like Tajay Spears, felt Tony Pollard-ish. So that's an interesting combination there, but uh, more than anything, the the Cowboy, which which part? Signing Tony Pollard or letting Derrick Henry go? Talk about heart and soul. Yeah, yeah. Letting Derrick, which part? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Why would you, you got Derrick Henry. Why? uh, No, no, I'm gonna gonna really give you the spirit of how I feel about it. It, It's not a why. How come? Why come? How come? Yeah, why come? There you go. Even better. Why come you let Derrick Henry leave and you bring in Tony Pollard? It doesn't make any sense. That makes no sense Feel to it? me. I, I'm trying to make it make sense and it's totally over my head. So you help me out here. Why does that make sense? I, I, I don't know. I guess we got to see what Derrick Henry gets, presumably from a team like the Cowboys or the Ravens. If it's more than three years and $24 million, which sounds similar to what DeAndre Swift got from the Bears, if it's more than that for a 30 year old Derrick Henry, who's definitely still got some trade left on his tires, then it, is definitely, then it is definitely a questionable move by our guy, Rand Carthen, and the Tennessee Titans. Because Tony Pollard is not an upgrade from Derrick Henry. Unless Derrick Henry just yeah. didn't want to be there for any number. And wanted to go to a contender because he didn't want to be part of a rebuilding Titans organization with however many years he's got left. But if Derrick Henry goes somewhere and gets, say, Saquon Barkley S money, even at 30 years old, then I do understand it, which again goes back to the theme we started with. I do understand it in terms of the economics that a lot of teams apply to the running back position, where it's like, hey, we want Tajay Spears to be the lead. Maybe it's a committee. Maybe Tajay Spears is the lead guy. Maybe Tony Pollard kind of does some Tajay Spears just like things or, you know, Brian Callahan, a new coach uses him in unique ways as more of a weapon than a running back. And maybe they find a power complement to Tajay Spears in the draft or for cheap. Maybe something like that. Maybe they bring back a Deontay Foreman. I don't know who played in Tennessee once upon a time. Maybe they do that and go committee wise and save money yeah. at running back as opposed to paying Derrick Henry to your and you made this point earlier. All right, you talk about running backs not wanting to go somewhere else to have to get to get love and get paid. Maybe Derrick Henry don't just don't want the Titans pay cut. Maybe it'll take less to go pay for somebody else, but ain't taking less from the Tennessee Titans. It could be those types of politics yeah. at play. Cause, yeah, because I meant I meant too much to you guys. I meant too much. Yeah. I've seen I've, yeah. I've, I've 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 seen too much. I've meant too much. Why would I do that? Why Why would I take a pay cut? And and, and sometimes that does factor into it. I just hope that this doesn't factor in, Michael. You know, you hear this in a lot of sports. Where and fans fans kind of feed into it and I think sometimes coaches and general managers believe it too. What do, what will a fan say a, 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 a hating fans playbook. This is number one in a hating fans playbook. If you win if you happen to win a division title you win a championship in your first year as a coach or second year as a coach or general manager a hating fan will say oh you know what you did that with insert previous regime name th- their players mm-hmm. so hey oh I <laughs> want with their players so what you're saying is they couldn't win with their own players 
So I came in and won with their players. I'm supposed to apologize for that. I hope it's not a case. What I'm getting at is hope it's not a case of Rand Carthon saying, hey, I need to bring in my own guys because uh, Derrick Henry represents the regime of Mike Vrabel and the John old, Robinson. Guard. And it's a yeah, new day I, in town. Rand does no, no. strike me as that kind of guy. Yeah, I, I don't think he I, hope not. I think he just wants to win. I, he doesn't I strike me as that kind of guy. Um, well, if he's trying to win, I, he should have he should have kept Derrick Henry over Tony Pollard. Well, if the Cowboys are really trying to win, if they're really all in, Dak, didn't Dak Prescott say he wanted to see what Jerry Jones means by all in? Go get Derrick Henry. Like that's 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 such a no brainer. Like I like, come on, man. Like what are we doing? <laughs> I mean, this this should already happen. I mean, legal tampering don't really mean you gotta wait till noon. We know that you ain't really gotta wait till noon to start talking to these people. Uh, Derrick Henry and I mean the Ravens less so only because of how the Ravens typically approach the running back position in general. But then again, I never thought I'd see today Howie Roseman would pony up for a running back like that. But okay, the mm. Ravens feel like less of a of a of a fit, even though they're obviously a contender and don't have a star running back. Speaking of star, it just feels like Derrick Henry, Cowboys. It makes too much sense. It's too much not too much like right um, for that to happen. But you know who I wonder? I think we covered all the running backs that that were on the move today. I don't think we forgot anybody. If we did, blame my head and not my heart. Um, <laughs> um, if, you know who's kind of like who might be I don't want to speak too soon, but who might be kind of like in a running back type position right now. Uh, wide receivers and specifically one wide receiver who is a, a 1B and a number one talent wise on probably most teams, but mm. T Higgins happens to be on the Cincinnati Bengals. So we have Jamar Chase is their one Cincinnati tag T Higgins today. We find out reportedly that T Higgins wants a trade. And I get why he would want to trade. He wants his bread. You know, um, he doesn't want to be on the franchise tag. Franchise tag, it sucks. Uh, let's, let's face it. It's, it's more of a weapon than a tool. Used to be a tool. Some cases, it works as a tool. Now, it's, it's more weaponized than anything. T. Higgins, though, if I'm another team, and I like T. Higgins, I like his talent. If I'm T. Higgins, though, man, I'll be honest with you. Or excuse me, if I'm another team, I'll be honest with you. I'm not trading. I'm not trading for and paying T. Higgins. Why not with not with eight to nine potential first round wide receivers coming into the league this year? Like it feels like like paying a, a wide receiver, a free agent wide receiver, or acquiring by a trade. Yeah, right. Or dra dra trading but with draft capital for a talented wide receiver like T. Higgins, a proven wide receiver like T. Higgins, and then paying him the contract he's going to want versus. Similar to quarterback. Why not start with a rookie contract with one of these stud receivers coming out of college and they seem to be coming out year in and year out. Like I, I just don't I just don't see a world in which I in which I'm a team. Now, just because I'm saying this, any minute it'll cross that somebody has traded for T Higgins and signed him to a huge contract. But if I'm a team, I, I would not invest resources in acquiring somebody else's number two wide receiver to make him my number one. I just go draft and develop my own. Okay, you could you said draft and develop, but what if you're not in the development state of mind stage? You just what if you're the Buffalo you're just Bills, trying to, maybe? Hey, what I want a guy. I want a guy yeah. who can come in and and I don't want to I don't want to wait a couple years. Because you know what? You tell me this. Uh, it, uh, I could be oversimplifying. I probably am. But I, hey, I'm just I'm just we're just freestyling here uh, on a Monday. I think part of the draft when you look at receivers coming into the draft. Yeah, obviously Jamar Chase is one of those guys top of the draft. I call that you struggle with that um, prediction, but I call I told you from the beginning that Jamar Chase is going to come in out of you LSU. You totally did. You totally did. Um, I told you he was go. He was going to crush I was, it. I was, I was, all like, over, I was like, I was like, oh, Penny Sewell. And to get Penny Sewell. Yeah, yeah. Because there's only, I, I was like, you know, you can't wait till the later in the draft to get offensive linemen. I was like, to get him with the fifth pick overall. I, I remember I'm that. I'm glad you I remember, remember that. Like it was yesterday. I'm glad I you remember, remember like it was yesterday. So, absolutely. I think maybe, maybe the thing is. Can people is, hear sarcasm? You, can people hear sarcasm it, yeah. on podcasts? Okay. I got it all wrong. Face, I got my, can see it was just the expression. opposite. Yeah, just make it. It was sure. just the opposite of what I said. So I'm lying. Uh, Michael sure. Smith had it, and I was. Oh, I'm, uh, oh, I'm time, lying. But, oh, so 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 yeah, I'm lying. Oh, that's not what you, that's not what you said to me. That's not that's what you not said what you to said. me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm lying. Now. Anyway, look. 
LSU receivers just make a decision. in the first just round. Just make a decision. Yeah, right? You're good, <laughs> right? Neighbors, Thomas, yeah, absolutely. Okay, all, all, all these guys, like, you know, uh, just, I mean, about, like, Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson, oh, if you take a guy from LSU, you're probably in pretty good shape. But I think a lot of these guys, the young guys, or you're Ohio about, State. Hey, drafting a receiver. Or, 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 the, or the Ohio State University. Let's, uh, come on now. Yeah. But a lot, in a lot of cases, the younger players is like a, sl a slot guy. You can, you can get a slot guy, plug him in, and a slot guy would just feel like, it, it would feel like he's been there for five or six years. But think about some of the players you could trade for. Like A.J. Brown changed Philadelphia. He, you already know what he is. You trade for him, right. and then he just kind of blossoms. I think T. Higgins DJ can have that Moore. effect on a team. Oh, I'm DJ sorry. I spoke too soon. Wait, hold on. Spoke too soon. Green Bay is cutting Aaron Jones. This is all happening in real time. Live TV ain't nothing like it, or live whatever okay. this is. Um, I yep. mentioned uh, it's both. Josh it's Jacobs with Aaron Jones. Like, nah, Aaron Jones, see you. Josh Jacobs. Uh, it's his show. Um, but I would say... Um, um, Oh, no. So, yeah, you're right. And then, okay, so this is a great rebuttal to what I was saying about just draft and develop one. Okay, so Josh Allen's, the course of Josh Allen's career was, was uh, the trajectory of Josh Allen's career was changed by the Another acquisition one. of Stephon Diggs from Minnesota. Jalen Hurst yep. was changed by A.J. Brown coming from Tennessee. Uh, and obviously Tennessee's fortunes were changed. And Tennessee thought they could draft and develop a guy, you know, Traylon Burks. How'd that work out replacing uh, A.J. Brown, to your point? Um, what was another one? Oh, and DJ Moore was supposed to do that for Justin Fields last year. I mean, he was he had a good season. Kind of, but it was, was the same principle. It was the same. It yeah, was the same principle. He was. Like, get, get, let's Problem get a big time him. proven wide receiver. Yeah, let's get a big time proven By wide the way, receiver. You, so you want to? Yeah, you want to? There's uh, something to be said for that. You want to? You want a uh, quick prediction uh, of where yeah. Aaron Jones, who was just cut, we just found this out. He was cut by Green Bay. I think he's going to where New he's going to go. New England. New England, okay. uh, and, and here, here's my here's my logic on it. New England has a lot of former Cleveland people and former Packers people. So, uh, if you see a, a, a good player who has some association to Cleveland recently or Green Bay, look to New England. Uh, Elliot Wolf, you know his father, Hall of Famer Ron Wolf, uh, still has a lot of sources and connections to Green Bay. I think Aaron Jones is going to the Patriots. Aaron Along Jones with, help I, know they pick, I know they picked up Gibson today, but I think uh, Aaron Jones, I can see him in New England where, you know, Alex Van Pelt, they want a lot of good running backs. So you got you to have a lot of running backs uh, in Wait, New England, a lot of good ones. Which Gibson? Uh, they got the Patriots Antonio, Antonio Gibson? Gibson? Oh, I, Patriots, see, I missed yeah. that one. See, look, stay, I didn't realize that. See, it's, hard, it's hard to keep up with this shit right now. That's a, that's a good signing. I like Antonio Gibson. If you can hold on to the ball, I like him. Wide receiver well, converted to running back. I like. Well, yeah, that's a big part of it, right? So you a big part of yeah. it. But, but, he, but he's a nice, he's a nice weapon. I like him. That's, that's interesting signing. So you got Anto Anto uh, Aaron Jones, uh, Antonio Gibson, and uh, Ramondre Stevenson still in the back. Ramondre. Okay. Yeah. All right. Not a bad. That'd be nice for whoever the quarterback was, is going to be. That's nice for whoever the quarterback. Old school. Yeah. Old school. But a, but a bunch of backs. We, but we not went, a lot we of went 20 minutes back. in it. We went 20 minutes in and ain't talking about quarterback. That must be a record. Ooh, that's coming next. Dog, uh, I wish I was related to Kirk Cousins. Because <laughs> I'm telling you, man. I know. I'm telling let me let me hold something. I, we yeah, talked exactly. about this man last week. And um yeah, I hope the I, I'm pretty sure the Vikings weren't as uh, ill, ill informed as I was because I was like, oh, this feels like this might be a negotiating tactic. Shit. That man went out and got him four years at one hundred and eighty million dollars. Forty five million a year. I was told there would be no math. Fifty million dollar signing right. bonus, hundred million dollars guaranteed. I mean, you know, who cares about the particulars? The Falcons have committed to Kirk Cousins as their quarterback, soon to be 36 year old coming off a torn Achilles, Kirk Cousins. Um, it's all monopoly money anyway. If you just talking about from a football standpoint, I like it. I like it. The OC there uh, runs the system that we, we, we broke this whole thing down 
about Kirk Cousins as the patron saint of that, you know, Kyle Shanahan, Sean McVay, Mike McDaniel offensive tree that was born in Washington when they were all on Mike Shanahan's staff with Kirk Cousins. Um, and so Raheem Morris, who also was on that staff, if you recall, um, Raheem yeah. Morris gets a quarterback to help him win right now. Uh, so the South got something to say. And uh, Atlanta is definitely going to have a say in who wins the AFC so uh, NFC South, I beg your pardon, with Kirk Cousins throwing to Drake London and Kyle Pitts and B. John Robinson and handing off to Tyler Algier on occasion. Not as much as B. John Robinson. Goodbye, Arthur Smith. Um, yeah, I, I, I like it. It's a great fit. It's a great fit. And uh, honestly, it's going to be interesting to see what Minnesota, how Minnesota pivots. Because Minnesota's sitting here with this, with this great situation for a quarterback as well, Kevin O'Connell, offensive mastermind, Justin Jefferson, Jordan Addison, TJ Hawkinson. You know, maybe it's Chandler. They'll find a running back. Um, they went and got Jonathan Grenard on defense. They're letting Daniil Hunter go. They went and got Jonathan Grenard from Houston. Uh, to rush the passer on defense. That was a playoff team a year ago before Kirk Cousins tore his, uh, his Achilles this year. Um, where, did the, where did the Vikings go and what's the domino effect there? Because the Vikings may end up having to go quarterback in the draft potentially earlier uh, than maybe the prospect would, would have otherwise commanded or, that, or, or earlier than projected. But uh, yeah, so that's that's two huge dominoes. Atlanta fills this quarterback vacancy and leaves a gaping one in Minnesota, Big Mike. Yeah, yeah, Michael. I mean, this is, um, there's so many layers to the signing, fascinating layers to the signing of Kirk Cousins by the Falcons. One, I, it, it makes me wonder about teams. We've already talked about Saquon Barkley, and the Giants apparently didn't make an offer to Saquon Barkley. And for, for the Vikings, I know. Cousins got hurt during the season, but this is this is a home game for you. You know what his contract status is. You know what he's looking for. You know what you have and what you don't have. Uh, you know what the what the renaissance was for Kirk Cousins once Kevin O'Connell got there. He was having a great season before he got hurt. He had a great season last year too. I mean, Kevin O'Connell is really a gifted offensive mind, offensive play caller. It was a good fit for Cousins. I, I just wonder what teams. Do it, it's, does it would it help you if I just gave you like a little bit of insight of how other teams value your own talent? Like what? Like what? What, what are you thinking? What are you thinking? How do you let Kirk Cousins walk out the door and you can turn around and say, "Well, I'm not going to pay him that much money." You didn't have to. Once you every day you get closer to the open market, that's another day where it's going to be harder for you to sign your own player. So if you had come to Kirk Cousins during the season and offered him a good contract, you wouldn't be sitting here looking around saying, well, wait a minute, this, this quarterback market is drying up a little bit and uh, we, we may be left with some somebody who is a lot less than what we had in Kirk Cousins. Uh, th that's that's the one thing that stands out. And the other thing, Cousins, we talk a lot about goats, goat quarterback. Oh, that guy's a goat. Tom Brady's a goat. Go, now go, Patrick go Mahomes. businessman. Go business, oh, yeah. man. Look, look. <laughs> you don't have to be. I, I like the people who are. Kirk Cousins not going to the Hall of Fame. Maybe he's not even going to the Vikings Hall of Fame. <laughs> but he has, he has fashioned a beautiful career of financial management. Kirk Cousins has the best portfolio wealth. in the NFL. Wealth. I love what he's talking. And not only generational wealth, he didn't make but he has shown you, you, your yeah. mama, your cousins too. He has everybody. made everybody. His like everybody, like and you know what? And then he, in typical rich person fashion, he don't wear it. He ain't wear. He ain't, right. he ain't wearing his money. <laughs> How's that say about rich folks, right? Maybe the richest right. people in the world. You never know. <laughs> I'm telling you, you Kirk know. cousins. Er everybody, everybody claim them. You want to talk about taking care of people. Everybody claim them. Oh, hey, man, I'm your fifth cut. Like what? I, I don't know you. He's invited to like 20 family reunions. Everybody wants him there. He gets the biggest piece of the chicken. Biggest. He, he's at the head table. Everybody likes Kirk Cousins because he knows how to get Kirk Cousins knows how to get money. Kirk Cousins is a great example for NFL players 
who are always talking about, hey, why aren't all contracts guaranteed? Because it's, it's at that lecture saying, I don't know what you're talking about. This TED talk is not for me. I don't know who this is for, but it's not yeah. for me because all my stuff yeah. is guaranteed. I get my yeah. money. I'm happy for him. <laughs> and I think I it's a, mine. And, and it's not even it's not just about money. As you pointed out, it's a really, really good signing for uh, the Atlanta Falcons. Yeah. So now Atlanta some has people might look at it and be like, yeah, some people might look at that though and be like, oh, four years, one hundred eighty million dollars for Kirk Cousins. I mean, for, the free agent you got overpay for everybody you know too. 36, 36 is the new twenty six at quarterback. Like he could he could fulfill this contract and still be a good quarterback. And still have something uh, left by the time. Yeah, it still has something left. An Achilles injury is 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 not the career ender that it once was. I mean, I. I yeah, you can raise your eyebrows at it, but it ain't my money. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know who uh, they needed a quarterback in the worst way. You know who I think the Vikings might be looking at. I mean, if you just if who? you look at the market a little bit, I don't know where you want to go next, but Atlanta who, Fields? Ha- Atlanta, right? Atlanta has its quarterback. Pittsburgh has its quarterback. Those are two destinations for Justin Fields that are now out. Just like yeah. that. Boom, gone market dried up in both of those places. So if if you're at Chicago, where do you where do you put Justin Fields? You can hold on to him, but that's know, awkward. I don't know. If, I don't know if you trade him. Look, I don't know if you trade him to Minnesota. And I get that. You Why know, not? Divi- intra divisional trades are not as taboo as as I like to think they are. I'm I'm, I'm I'm sorry. If I'm Chicago, I'm not giving. I'm not helping Minnesota. I'm not sending a quarterback to Minnesota. You better Brett Favre this shit and circ- and go go to you know go to cir- the around about way to get to Minnesota. If that's where you want to go, but I'm not. Hey, I'm not. What are you worried no. about? Wait, hey, hey, you I'm, got the name. I'm worried. I'm worried you about. Didn't... I don't want. Hold. On, I don't want mix up topics. I'm worried about the same thing the Denver Broncos ought to be worried about Russell Wilson. I'm worried about looking bad. I'm, <laughs> I'm worried about somebody making me look bad. Now, look, one could say, well, hey, we know Justin Fields. And we know he ain't all that, so we ain't afraid of Justin Fields. Hell, as you know, the Patriots once traded Drew Bledsoe to the Buffalo Bills. So they could be like, oh, we're worried about about what Justin Fields for. But okay, but Justin Fields, I think it's fair to say, was not throwing to Justin Jefferson, was not throwing to TJ Hawkinson, although I like Cole Komet as well, and DJ Moore last year, was not throwing to Jordan Addison on the other side. It wasn't being coached by Kevin O'Connell. So the last thing, if you're a Chicago Bears fan, that you are a Chicago Bears fan, individual that you want to see is Justin Fields realizing his potential in Minnesota. But what I wonder is, am I, I'm just going to project, I'm going project, to just say me, am I more enamored by the idea of Justin Fields than the NFL is? Because why are all these quarterback dominoes falling and Justin Fields has yet, we, I mean, there is, there doesn't seem to be any smoke or fire around a Justin Fields trade. He was supposed, to, he said he was supposed to be going home to Atlanta. What happened to that stupid ass social media video? No disrespect, but the one that people made into like, oh, he said going home. There was a voice in the background that said he's ready to go home, and Justin Fields was in Atlanta. That was supposed to be a done deal not that long ago. Oops. Look, you you are. Uh, to answer I your am. question, oh, you answer my question. I am. I'm more. Yeah, I'm gonna answer your question. And this, for is you. Co- and this is coming you from are. a Buckeye. This is coming from a Buckeye. Yeah. So yes, yeah, you keep it in a buck. It's a Buckeye. You keep it in a buck. It's coming from a Buckeye. I have determined. I have determined after uh, just a little bit of thought, a little bit more thought about the 2021 draft class. It oh is God. one of the worst quarterback, oh cla- not just the first round. Oh my the God. entire class what may be one of the tale. worst. One of the worst in the history of football. Like Michael, everybody in the class. Oh, so, so those five quarterbacks in the first round, four of them are either on or about to be on their second teams. Four of the five in the first round. Then, you like we talk about the five, you know who the sixth quarterback taken in that draft was? Kellen Mond. The first one number. Oh, wow. Kellen Mond. Out wow. of football. He's out of football already. One year, one and done. Out of football. So, you talk about six quarterbacks taken, and the number one guy, I mean, uh, as, as you say, uh, lowest of keys or highest of keys, <laughs> songs in the key of Trevor Lawrence's life. Uh, if you if you look at this, he has been sacked nearly a hundred times in three seasons, and that's the best. That's the best of the best. He's supposed to be some generational prospect, and you know, look at him. He's a can't miss, and look at the size, and 
and, and, and the arm strength and make all the all the cliches that we say about great quarterbacks every year, including this year. So are you are you too high on Justin Fields? Yes, based on the sample size, based on the batch that we got that he was a part of. Yeah, you're probably too high. Okay. All right. So the 21 draft quarterback class is just a, one big cautionary tale. Uh, <laughs> Mac Jones life came full circle and it came at him fast. He is going back to Jacksonville ways from and not in the way that he always dreamed of. Uh, he's going back as a backup, which is insane. Mm. I, I, I can still yep. remember him waddling down the stage on draft night and everybody being like, if that ain't a Patriot, I don't know what is. I can still Good remember, you know, this. I, 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 I can still remember uh, speculation about him being Kyle Shanahan's guy at three instead of Trey Lance. It's just life came at him fast. Okay, but let me say this though, and this is coming from a person who loves the draft more than just about anything. If you look at those five guys, you look at those five guys. Trevor Lawrence was made out the best, number one overall, but he had to endure Urban Meyer. Urban Meyer damn near ruined him out the gate. Number two, Zach Wilson went to the Jets. I'll leave that there. I'm not saying he got, well, I'm not gonna leave it there. <laughs> Zach Wilson, Zach Wilson got his own problems, his own struggles, his own Say limitations. No Maybe he was overhyped, but he went to the yep. Jets. Okay, it's typically where quarterback careers go to die. If they don't go to New York to die, they go to Chicago to die. Justin Fields mm. went to Chicago. And you I skipped don't over, think you can skipped say, over number three. No, I know. I'm just, I'm just, there's two organizations that have struggled. Uh, I'm, I'm getting okay. there, but that, but I'm saying mm. like, I, I, I don't think you can fairly say that Chicago has always done right by Justin Fields. Okay. That's so right. number three, Trey Lance. Number three, Trey Lance. Probably shouldn't have been traded up four in the first place. In the first place, I beg your pardon. Um, but his situation that he landed in was not, it was not conducive to a quarterback that needed as much development as he did coming out of college. They needed a guy to step in and be an upgrade over a guy that had taken him to a Super Bowl and I believe a conference championship game as well. They needed him to come in and right. be able to play right away as most of these young guys are expected to do and nobody was more ill equipped to do that than a guy coming out of the school he came out of with North Dakota State coming out of North Dakota State yeah. right uh, through COVID having barely played then getting hurt as much as he did. Now I don't believe that Trey Lance could play but did he ever get a real chance to show it and um, Who's the last one I mentioned? Oh, and then Mac, Mac Jones. Jones. And then Mac Jones, we thought, went to a great situation. He went to New England. He's going he to did. play with the greatest coach. He, he went to the greatest, played the greatest coach in NFL history. And he had Josh McDaniels for a second. Yeah. And then Floor Bill Belichick out. made a decision that has nothing to do with Mac Jones, that is beyond Mac Jones's control. In putting Joe Judge and Matt Patricia in charge of the mm. offense, he never Ooh. recovered. So it's not only a cautionary tale, but it's honest, honestly evidence. And we just focused on quarterbacks. It's evidence yeah. for why people say the draft is un-American. Or oh, the draft should it, it should not be an NFL draft. And I love the NFL draft, but so much of it is out of these guys' control especially yeah, quarterbacks yeah. who are going to teams right. who need quarterbacks and oftentimes going to shitty situations. Man, like, man, if I was a quarterback, if I was a top quarterback and I went to the combine and I was on a stage, I'd be like, yo, I just hope I, sli I hope I slide to 24. <laughs> I hope I slide to 32. <laughs> man, right. I like you. You want, you want to go number one? Nope. <laughs> not me. Nope, don't I want do to. not want to go number yeah. one. I mean, yeah, Caleb Ke Williams was right that the Bears are a better team than their yeah. number one overall pick would suggest because obviously they have Carolinas. But as Bryce Young, I didn't work out last year. You know, CJ Stroud is it might might be an outlier to go in that situation and turn it around the way that he did. Anthony Richardson, I mean, for what we saw so far, so good. But it's like these five quarterbacks, it's not all their fault that four but of them yeah, are failures and yeah. another one has been up and down. Okay. It's not all their fault. Okay. It's never all yeah, their yeah, fault. Because yeah. wait for oh, it. Okay. I ain't said it in two weeks. 
They're all system quarterbacks. <laughs> okay. They're all system quarterbacks. It's not all that. Hey. Maybe they suck. Maybe they don't. I don't know. I don't know. No, they probably suck though. They probably they probably <laughs> suck. Even though like, both things can be true. Okay. It's not all Maybe, their fault. Okay. I'll meet you in the middle. Maybe they're not good and, enough to transcend their circumstances. How about that? Yes. There you go. They're That's what I'm looking for. Exactly. They're not transcending. That's what I'm looking for. Because now we've gone too far. I know, I know, I know, I know what era I live in. I know what era I live in. See, I see I'm 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 in the hybrid. I'm I, I wasn't raised, I'm, I was raised in both. I was raised in the old school, hey, you just gotta figure it out. And then I'm a product of the new school too. So I understand all the hey, everybody's gotta be comfortable. I I get the three day or two day work weeks. I get that. I'm all on board with that. Okay. Like this whole thing, like, employees have to have things. They have to, feel, it, they don't want to feel like they are working for you. It's a partnership and let's have some games at work and let's have some snacks and let's have some long break times and all this stuff. This is good. This is good. All right. I understand it. But the bottom line is this. We've gone too far. We've gone too far. We're saying, oh, they need this. They need, I, Oh, I gotta have I gotta have the right head coach and I gotta have the right ownership group and I gotta have the right OC and uh, my offensive line's gotta be right and I, I gotta have a good tight end. So, you know, just in case I run into trouble, I gotta have somebody in the middle of the field. It ain't always gonna be like that. And no, it's not. We talk about it's great not quarterbacks. It's not gonna be perfect. Yeah. Yeah. We talk about great quarterbacks. And and I know over the eras. You look at some quarterback situations and they didn't have a lot. Whether it's Dan Marino going to the Dolphins. Oh, yeah, Don Shula is known for developing quarterbacks. He wasn't. Uh, yeah, yeah. You talk about Brett Favre going to Green Bay. Before Green Bay was known for quarterbacks, Brett Favre was there and he thrived sure. when he didn't have a lot around him. What so do you mean he never a lot around some, him? Bullshit. Wait a minute. No, no that's not the revisionist saying, history. He had no, plenty what around I'm saying, him in when he Green first, Bay. When he got first to Green went Bay, there. when he first, when he first went, there, went there, with Reggie White, like Reggie White, they went there the same year, if I'm not mistaken. Like, wouldn't it? 92? I'm talking about offensively. I'm not offensively. Offensively, he had a, one of the greatest coaching staffs of all time. Like, we look at all the coach, uh, head coaches who've come from that scheme. He had, okay. didn't he have Sterling okay. Sharp when he first went there? So, so this, this, so this is what we, this, so this is what we need, though. Okay, all right. Maybe Brett Favre's not. It's the most yet. important. Right. Position. Yeah, probably not. Right. That's okay. That's okay. Uh, That's okay. It's okay. I, your overall point. Hold on. Is, is 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 valid? Go but ahead. we Go have ahead. to. Is, is it? I but I I gotta make sure. So before I draft you, I gotta not not check like five boxes. I gotta check fifteen boxes, just to make no. sure you have success. You no, you don't have to check fifteen boxes, but you do have to set them up for success. It's the most important position, but it's also the it most is. dependent position. It's the most dependent it's position. The most important position. That don't make them it's soft. The most de- <laughs> it's the most dependent position. And it's also the most resilient position. You've got yeah. to be able to you got to be able to figure it out sometimes when people around you aren't the best. When 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 the situation is not great, you still have to be able to figure something out. Yeah, but Michael, I, I, but Michael, but Michael, the great ones, few and far between, do they have to figure it out to the level of the guys that go through dysfunctional organizations? There's okay. a reason why most of the quarterbacks who are in the QB career graveyard, a lot of them have been through the same teams. It's the same teams over and over with with few exception of the of the ones that are missing. It's the Chicago QBs. It's the Jets QBs. It's the Browns QBs. It's the same organizations historically that have not supported quarterbacks properly. The same typically dysfunctional organizations with few exceptions. But no, but I, but here's what I, here's what I do want to get to though, if you don't mind. All right, go ahead. I do want to I do want to be optimistic. There is hope. There is hope because it wasn't that long ago because I was trying to think of like recent drafts because every time we talk we, we we hype up all these quarterbacks we got to remind ourselves a couple of these dudes gonna be on a different team in a couple of years because there, there's a stat flying around about top five quarterbacks and how many have changed teams. Okay, so 2018 obviously remember that was the one where Lamar went 32nd. Okay. Yep. Um, and he was the last quarterback taken obviously in the and first Baker round. went first Baker went first in between you Josh had Josh Allen Rosen seven. Josh Allen seven Sam Darnold third to the Jets 
Sam Darnold, mm. Josh Allen, Josh Rosen in the middle. Okay. Um, Josh Allen had great coaching. They got him Saquon uh, uh, Stephon Diggs. Excuse me. All right. Saquon Barkley was the second pick in that draft. All right. So Baker Mayfield, it wasn't that long ago where, you know, I was pushing I, from from here, but the Browns certainly were. I was kicking and pushing Baker Mayfield to the curb and out the door to make room for Deshaun Watson. Okay, mm. where I yes. was team Odell. Where I was team Odell in that feud with Baker Mayfield, where I was like, eh, this is me talking. Look, I will tell you when I'm right now. I'll tell you when I'm wrong. I, Baker ain't that good. Baker ain't all that. You know, Baker ain't that good, right? That, I, I said I was not a Baker guy, okay? Until I was at that game where he joined the Rams a day or two earlier and came in and beat the Raiders on Thursday Night Football. I was like, this that dude, was awesome. man, I, I see why people awesome love Awesome game and a miserable season. Okay. That was an awesome game. He, pa he passes through um, at the Leeds Cleveland. He goes to Carolina. Okay, right. That was the next stop was Carolina. That's right. It was didn't Carolina. work out there and they cut him. They cut him. Okay, because Carolina certainly got this shit together these days, right? He goes to Carolina. He goes to uh, the Rams for a cup of coffee for a cup of coffee with Sean McVay. Okay, then he goes to the Bucks. And what did we say last year because of the wait for it? The supporting cast that he was inheriting from Tom Brady, like that, like, oh, wait a minute. He could be this year's Geno Smith, who also mm. passed through the Jets and had to go yep. through a sojourn until he ended up, you know, hitting his stride in Seattle. He could be this year's Geno Smith. And sure enough, Baker Mayfield, congratulations, my brother, getting his $100 million bag. Well deserved, well earned. This dude was running a scout team defensive end in Carolina on, uh, on occasion, about it just for shits and gigs. But look at him now, right? So there's there's him. So now the next next Geno Smith, and ironically, coincidentally, oh by the way, shout out to Mike Evans. Listen to the woman. Great job, Kirk Cousins moving with his wife's family. Mike Evans, listen yeah. to the woman. Okay, so the yeah. next next Geno Smith. Could be Geno Smith is Geno Smith's damn. I can't even talk Michael Michael Smith can't talk. That's all right. Geno Smith's predecessor in Seattle could be Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson, even though he's already been paid and then some could be the next I person who can have a testimony of hey, all it takes is getting into the right situation because what I said I loved about Russell Wilson signing the most attractive thing about Russell Wilson signing is that you're getting him for $1.21 million, I believe it is, and the Broncos are paying him $39 million to pay for somebody else. So as I said last week, this trade, which is already being called the worst in NFL history, could get worse if Russell Wilson looks anywhere near the way he did in Seattle. Here's why I like the fit for the Steelers. First of all, it's a very Steelers signing. Very frugal. Isn't it? So on brand, so on brand for the Steelers. So not yes, only is Russell is. Wilson guaranteed $39 million this year, he's guaranteed a winning season because we know Mike Tomlin does not do losing seasons. But he can go to Pittsburgh, and this is, the, this is where I'm optimistic. And you know I've had a lot of things to say about Russell Wilson that are not on the positive side. But in this situation, he can go there and not... If, he, if, he's, if he's over this... You don't have to cook, Russ. Just eat. There you go. That's a word. Russ don't have to cook. All he got to do is eat. Okay, throw it up to George Pickens. We'll see if Deontay Johnson is there. Maybe once in a while, find Pat Fryermuth over the middle or Darnell Washington over the middle once in a while. Hand it off to Jalen Warren or Najee Harris behind hopefully an improved offensive line with a defense that can win games for the Steelers. Like if Russ has realized that it doesn't have to all be about him, he could beat out Kenny Pickett for that job and the Broncos could have egg on their face and Russell Wilson could be the latest in the line of quarterbacks that says, you know what? I wasn't washed. I wasn't cooked. The situation was yeah. just dirty. It was just nasty for me. Right. Look, why not? I, I know we talked. We disagree on this or we disagreed on it uh, last week when we were trying to come up with these quarterbacks and I put him as an average quarterback in the top 15 or 16 in the NFL and you came up with people 
who you feel like are better than Russell Wilson. So I still think he's good. And even if I didn't think he was a good, a good quarterback, I feel like they paid him one point two million dollars. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was gonna say. I feel like most teams in the league should have been scrambling to talk to Russell Wilson. You can feel any way you want about the salary cap and oh, it's so easy to create cap space. All I got to do is convert this into a, a roster bonus or a signing bonus. You can create some space. You ain't got to play that game with Russell Wilson. Right. If you can say so, you get a quarterback. Somebody else got that taken care of. <laughs> he bar- is, Thank you, Denver. <laughs> He is literally the cheapest quarterback you yeah. can sign. There's no He's one free. cheaper. He's There's no free. one cheaper. Not Gardner Minshew, not Jacoby Brissett. Nobody's cheaper than Russell Wilson, and he's still competent. He is a competent quarterback. Uh, I think that's all he's got to be with Arthur Smith in that offense. That's all I, I think it's, be. And that's the other part of it. Arthur Smith is there. Arthur Smith, don't know about him as a head coach. I do know about him as an offensive coordinator and what he values and what the Steelers value. It's a good fit there. Smith, a great Smith a, and, and Tomlin is a good fit. And then Smith, Tomlin, Russell Wilson is a good fit in Pittsburgh. And by the way, Russ, not only do you not have to cook, eat, you have to, I, I'm going to tell you what to eat. It's Pittsburgh. Eat pierogies. <laughs> eat, eat wings. I, like, like subs. <laughs> right. Hey, don't don't get into this. You don't need a catchphrase there. Don't do like, you know, hey, let's let's ride. Let's get up. No, none of that. Just fit in. No the audience. Fit in. No the this audience. This is an organization. Hey, come that, on. That's man. What I'm saying. Hey, conversely, I'm talking about the organizations that cycle through as Pittsburgh. They know how to do it. They do they do it the same way for generations. They know how to do it. Couldn't couldn't ask for a better situation for Russ. And contrary to what you may think, Michael Holly, I am rooting for Russell Wilson. All right, uh, Michael, my bet your money. Do Ooh. the Chiefs <laughs> do the Chiefs three peat? Right now, Chiefs of the field. Chiefs of the field. The field. For a three peat. Not, not that they've kept Chris Jones. They managed to yeah, keep the field. Chris Jones. They broke him off. Really? Okay. I told you. Yeah. I I will not bet against Kansas City. Henceforth now and forevermore. Yeah, I know. I mean, look, if if that's all it took, though, having the best quarterback or or the best coach, then a lot of, lots of teams over the years would have had, you know, three straight championships. It's never happened before in the in the merger nope. in the uh, uh, right. since 1970. Since Green, it's never happened since Green Bay. Yeah. Yeah. So or, or it, NFL and history since Green Bay. For yep. a reason. Difficult. I, I think it's just really, really hard to pull off. And Kansas City, rightfully so, back to back champions. But it's not like Kansas City is playing in a different league than everybody else. Kansas City is not. Uh, those games, all of those games in the playoffs, save for the Dolphins game, those games yeah. are close and could have gone either way. And yep. and they worked out in the Chiefs favor, but I, I think it's just too hard to go three straight. His, so I'm going to say I'm going to take his, the field. I feel good about that. History says you're right. Uh, odds are that you're right, even though after Eric Armstead, that news him refusing to pay cut him about to get cut uh, by the 49ers. I don't I, you know, listen, nobody ca- uh, capes up for the 49ers more than me. I wouldn't put the 49ers above the Chiefs. I wouldn't put anybody above the Chiefs. I'm taking the Chiefs over the field. Yes, and I know that the previous eight teams that tried to three-peat all failed. Um, but I think the Chiefs are going to be different. Um, them keeping Chris Jones was massive, uh, just as big as that contract that he got. We'll see what happens with LeJarrius Sneed, but even if they trade him and, and, and reload with, with draft capital, like they always seem to draft and develop players. They have a system, which Patrick Mahomes yeah. thrives in perfectly. Um, and they're, and they're going to find a way to improve this year. That's the other part. They're going to find a way. To, they're not just going to sit and rest on their laurels and say, all right, well, we, we're the defending champs and everybody else can get better, but we just, we just chilling. We're going to just keep our guys and that's it. They're going to find ways to continue to improve. Like even just, they won the Super Bowl, but I think they realized that their receivers dropped more passes than anybody last year. So imagine running it back with wide receivers. 
you know, <laughs> or maybe another running back for all we know. I mean, th that's just offense. That was the youngest defense in the league. A lot of reasons to believe they'll be right back. Although I do like, you know, remember Antonio Pierce said that the Raiders got the, uh, they, they set the blueprint uh, for, for coming huh. off the head of yeah. the snake with punishing Patrick Mahomes. Christian Wilkins, love that signing for the Raiders. Christian Wils Wilkins and Max Crosby on that defensive line, absolutely love that pickup. But uh, we got to wrap this up. I do want to talk about, at some point, maybe it's today after the show, maybe it's another day. Brett Reed, Andy Reed's son, and his sentence being commuted by the governor of, uh, of, men, of, of Missouri. Um, that just does not sit well with me, as I know it doesn't sit well with you and many others. Uh, it makes it really hard to root for the Chiefs uh, as an organization, um, given the circumstances around this tragedy. Um, yeah, I, it's, uh, I can't compartmentalize that. Nor should the league, well, nor should the Chiefs, yeah. nor should Chiefs fans. We should, con we should yeah, not continue to yeah. compartmentalize that story and ignore it because it's not, it's not disconnected from the organization. That's the issue. Yeah, you can't ignore the story. You can't ignore the story, but but that story has so many ripples, uh, so many so many circles to it. We got to get into it. All right, Mike, picking up the conversation that we ended the Peacock uh, program with, and that's just my discomfort with uh, the way this Brett Reed situation has been handled um, by multiple parties, not just Missouri Governor Mike Parsons. Um, but also just the way we've collectively compartmentalized it, if you will. Um, all right, so in case you're not familiar with the story, uh, Brett Reed, this is um, Andy Reed's son. Uh, he's an assistant on the chief staff. He was also also an assistant in Philadelphia and got in trouble there uh, as well. He was Andy Reed's staff in Philadelphia. Um, back in February of 2021, uh, he was driving while intoxicated, more than 80 miles an hour, collided with two vehicles on the side of an exit ramp along an interstate near the chief's practice facility. Um, he severely injured several people, but most severely uh, a young girl named Ariel Young. Uh, she was in a coma for 11 days, sustained traumatic, a traumatic brain injury. She's still dealing with a lot of challenges right now. So most recently, um, as in last week, Governor Mike Parsons commuted his sentence uh, and he had pleaded guilty to a single felony charge of driving while intoxicated in 2022. He was sentenced to three years in prison in November 2022 released from prison and now under house arrest until October 31st, 2025, and will be on probation. It's just, it's sickening um, that he's clearly getting off easy because of who his daddy is and how much the governor loves the team. It's really that simple, but, it, but beyond, you know, look, rich people, privileged people, famous people, connected people, whatever you want to call them, always, you know, uh, get a pass. They skip the line, they get a pass, you know, they don't have to pay the consequences that, that regular people have to pay. But no, it's not just that for me. It's the Kansas City Chiefs. I know they reached a settlement to help with some of uh, the young girl's uh, needs or what have you. Um, but it's just the silence is just so deafening around the whole thing. Like, what has the league said about it? What have the Chiefs said publicly about it? What has anybody like actually said about it from an accountability standpoint connected with the NFL? Who's actually condemned this? Who's investigated this? this? Who's even commented on it, Michael? It's almost like they're just expecting us to do what we always do, which is just forget about it. And you know, don't, don't focus on the literal shiny objects over here as in the yeah. Lombardis, you know? And I'm just like, I think, yeah, I, I like a lot of things about the Chiefs. You know, our guy Ted Cruz been running PR there. If you don't know who Ted Cruz is, he's the guy in every single picture at the Super Bowl. He's the brother yeah. in every single picture of the Super Bowl. That's Ted Cruz. Great man. I, I, I like Andy Reid. I like I like Brett Beach. I like I like the general manager. Um, I know the I know the owner got an F minus in the recent player grades or whatever it was. But there's a lot of things to like about that organization, and yet this part of it just stinks to high heaven, and nobody is given a legitimate explanation or even a true public apology, not just that sentencing, but a true public apology that I'm aware of. If I missed it, I apologize. But a true public apology about, wait, was this dude drinking at the facility? You know? And it just, it's just, it's, it's, 
I, I, I can't with it. I, I, I don't even, I'm speechless about it, to be honest with you, because it's like, like, why is this not a bigger deal? Because it, because I, because I yeah, think about it is. like, I think, I, I think about, I think about Ava, I think about Maya, I think about Savannah, I think about, that could have been any little girl. Or That's anybody, right. how many times have you, have you been parked on the side of a highway and some, some dude driving 84 miles an hour just changes lives irreparably, changes does irreparable lives. harm to, to lives and gets to go on with his? All because the governor is a Chiefs fan, and that's it, and, and that's it. You know, I, I think the larger the larger issue before we get to the NFL, uh, I want to talk about society at large and how these things happen. And you want to talk about accountability? There's no accountability from the NFL, but how about the accountability from the governor? He does this, he commutes this sentence, and then doesn't talk about it. It can't get him on the record for a couple of days, and. It has nothing to do with anything except for his fandom because this is one of the rare instances where Republicans are outraged by it and Democrats are outraged by it and they both are looking for answers for how this could happen. So this, this really is a case in our legal system. We know it, but just like in the NFL, those who are those who benefit from this inequity in our legal system understand that this energy we will not keep the same energy. They know yeah. we won't. So yeah. it's it's uh, we have energy based on celebrity cases, energy based on something that affects us directly, but not necessarily our neighbors. It's something that affects us directly, but eventually it doesn't it loses its power, and they know that. Like we know this, what we're saying about what we're saying about our legal system, what we're saying about some of our judges has been true uh, as uh, as long as the United States has been in existence, that if you have the resources and if you have the connections, you will be able to get out of situations that that truly leave others behind bars, forgotten about for months, for years, for decades. So that that's one. The governor is a fan. Clearly, he's a fan. And that's why there's no other explanation for Britt Reed's sentence. Three year sentence become a year and a half, not even a year and a half. OK, right. that, that's one. But then the other thing is compartmentalize. You said you can't compartmentalize. Unfortunately, I disagree with you. We all do it. No, I'm saying I'm saying we I'm struggling compart to compartmentalize. I'm struggling. Yeah. To. OK, struggling to. Yeah, yeah. But I think we'll do it and then we move on. We That's move on. on. It's it's March. Uh, we're compart we struggle to compartmentalize, but then hey, there's another free agent signing. Here's a trade. Here's a draft right. rumor. Training right. camp. She's season starts. Yeah. Here, yeah. here we I, go. No. And so was, was shame. That's shame, was shame, shame on us. For perpetuating shame that, on us. that cycle, shame, 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 on on the, shame on the NFL and the Chiefs uh, for their deafening silence, at least from where, where I sit. And uh, I hope that young lady and her family uh, never have to want for anything again. All right, Mike, I appreciate yeah, and, you, brother, I, man. And I'm with you. And I'm with you. One more thing. One more thing. I think I think this yeah, is what right. we should stay with, though. One more thing. With, with the Chiefs, we should demand they've got videos that they have not released of what right. happened. Right. Right. Come on, release right. those. Right. Come on, you, you, you can't be after the game. And, and can, I, can I call some people out real quick? You can't after game say, I give thanks to my Lord and Savior and, and, and implore people to have a better life and to have a, a, a clear conscience and, to, and to, do, to devote themselves to something larger than themselves and then ignore your neighbors. Yeah, man. You can't ignore your community. You can't live that. You can't speak that and then ignore the community. So come on now. You got to step up. Hey, thank you for watching Brother from Another. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, go ahead and do that now. Don't forget, you can catch us three to four weekdays on PeacockTV.com and on Sirius XM Channel 85.